Hello everyone, welcome back to Brombird News. I can't believe it's already March and nesting season is just around the corner. So let's talk about nesting materials that you can put up for your birds. In the past, it was all right to put up pet hair and undyed yarn, but there's been a new development here. Cornell did some studies and they no longer recommend that. Basically, birds need all the natural things outside to build their nests and that's one of the reasons why we don't really clean up our yard in the fall you know we don't rake leaves we don't remove any pine needles we don't cut down any of the flowers uh, Stephen and Lori Bigler have kindly shared a bunch of pictures of their birds picking up all sorts of nesting materials in their yard so here's a list of what's recommended dry twigs and leaves dry grass make sure it's never been treated with any kind of chemicals moss feathers bark strips pine needles and flower fluff you know things like from thistle and uh, cottonwood and milkweed and also mud for the birds that use that when building their nests every year we watch robins help themselves to mud and grass in one of our neighborhood puddles i took this video on april 27th a few years back If you think you're having problems with woodpeckers, check this out. I'm having my own battles with woodpeckers down here in sunny Baja, Mexico, basically emptying my Hummer feeders in the space of two or three hours. But I'm glad I do not have to deal with this problem. This exterminator named Nick Castro was asked to perform a vacation rental inspection in Glen Allen, California, basically to look for a mealworm infestation, usually a routine job. After ending the two-story house, Nick cut a small hole in a bedroom wall just above the baseboard. Just like coins pouring out of a slot machine in Vegas, acorns, several hundred pounds of them, gushed out of the hole. A pair of aptly named acorn woodpeckers had been using the house to store acorns as their food. When Nick enlarged the hole, even more acorns issued forth. He and his crew filled no less than eight large garbage bags in the end, 700 pounds worth. Usually these woodpeckers store their acorns in holes drilled into wooden fence posts, utility poles, old tree snags, and even the walls of wooden buildings like barns. Sometimes they wedge them beneath wooden shakes or shingles. It's not pretty. These birds hid the acorns behind the house's trim and in the process destroyed the original wood siding. When the owners replaced it with vinyl siding, the birds started filling the chimney. During its repair, acorns poured out of it too. Castro figured that the two three-ounce birds had been adding the acorns to their stash for two to five years. Over that time, they had managed to fill the chimney 20 to 25 feet high. A good thing that the owners had not started the fire in the chimney at that time. Having seen firsthand the pairs of breeding white storks as part of the rewilding efforts on the impressive Nep wildland property in the UK last summer, it's easy to understand the passion that humans feel for these magnificent big white birds. Certainly this is the case for those volunteers working for the European Stork Villages Network, which is a collection of 15 villages from 15 different European countries. The network was created to use the villages as a model for white stork conservation at the national level. Such an effort would not work for black storks, a close cousin, because they tend to be more private and avoid human contact. But the white storks readily seek out humans, building their nests on roofs and visiting people's gardens on a daily basis. Each year from late February to March, the storks return from migration and to spend about six months raising their young. In September, they head south again to spend winter in Africa. But when the storks show up in spring to breed, there's palpable excitement among the folks in each village. They've grown very attached to the birds and treat them just like friends, even giving them meaningful names. Whether the village is located in Turkey, Hungary, Serbia, or Croatia, and whether the relationship involves children or seniors, the story is the same. For instance, in one Turkish village, every nest is assigned to the family living nearest it, and the youngest of the family becomes the symbolic host of the nest. The storks need all the help they can get, too. Their migration flights are fraught with perilous obstacles, such as striking electric cables and skyscrapers, being shot by hunters, getting caught in extreme weather conditions, and being electrocuted. Best of all for birds and humans alike, thanks to social media, the storks bring people together from all over the world. 
So we basically covered the most common words that start with the letter A, and now we're moving to the letter B. Last year we talked about black capped chickadees, and the next bird that starts with the letter B that kind of popped into our mind was the bald eagle. And what a majestic bird to talk about. In 1782, Congress chose the bald eagle as the US national emblem. And I remember when I first learned about it years ago, I wasn't actually surprised at all. You know, uh, in that century, at that time, there were actually so many bald eagles around. In some areas, there were so many of them that they were just depleting fish and poultry farms and farmers were shooting them right, left and center. From then on, things went downhill for bald eagles with pesticides, habitat loss and shootings. 50 years ago, their populations were so low that in some areas they were actually endangered. Thankfully, with the ban of DDT and all the other practices being stopped, the bald eagle is back. If you ever come to visit our town of Knowlton, we have the most perfect spot for bald eagles. They love large bodies of water, tall trees, and not that many humans around. And in the middle of our Brome Lake, there's a privately owned island, which is actually called Eagle Island because of all the bald eagles that live there. Right now, the lake is frozen and totally safe to walk on, so you can actually get closer to the island, so bring your binoculars and your camera if you come for a visit. I don't think any of you will have any difficulty recognizing an adult bald eagle. Their white head and the white tails, both in females and males, are so easy to spot. Though it does take juvenile bald eagles about four to five years to get that plumage. Often juvenile bald eagles are confused with golden eagles. Some bald eagles migrate to breed. They can go all the way to Alaska and others just stay put and breed in the same area where they were born. Their diet is basically whatever is available and easy to get to. Fish is their favorite, but they'll happily eat small mammals and water birds and they're known for stealing food from others. During their non-breeding times, they tend to hang out, roost and feed in large communities because they're rather social birds. Their nests are so impressive. Bald eagles actually reuse and repair their old nests year after year. No wonder there are so many bald eagle live cams that you can tune in and watch. But they only have one brood per year. And if you watch any of those videos on those live cams, you'll see that it's normally two chicks that are in the nest. With the weather being so all over the place in March, we find that this month there are always so many birds at our bird feeders. That's why the photo contest theme was Feeding Frenzy. Let's check out the top five. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. April, when all the snow melts, is spring is back. Well, that's it. That's all for now. Take care. Enjoy the spring. I'll catch you in two weeks.